How's it going, people? Been a little while, hasn't it? Yeah. Been picking on the Scientologists lately. I don't want the Mormons to feel jealous like I'm neglecting them, though. Trust me, I don't want to neglect anybody. Okay, almost forgot where I was. And this is a Rolling Rock. It's a premium beer, and yet oddly affordable. There's not a lot to drink, though. I might have to read a few chapters to get a buzz. I don't know. Music is Metatronic, and it's free download from Jamindo.com. Supposedly royalty free, although YouTube just gave me a copyright notice on my new channel for Piano Chocolate, and I counterfiled. I told them, hey, it's royalty free. You download it, it comes with a license even. So I'm pretty sure that's okay now. I hope. Whatever that was about. I guess they must have had a, two or three notes together that triggered their automated uh, uh, copyright detection software. All right, chapter 22 of Third Nephi. The Savior further quotes the prophecies of Isaiah. Compare Isaiah 54. So Jesus came all that way, went through all that shit, just so he can come to America and expound upon a book they all got already in the brass plates. Okay, well, you can compare this chapter to Isaiah 54, though. One. And then, shall that which is written to pass. Thank you, Jesus, or Isaiah, one of you guys. Oh, that's nice. Hmm. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing, and cry aloud, those that didst not travail with child? For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. You tell. I seem to recall Jesus saying this on the way to Calvary. You know, on a couple of uh, Gospels. I think it was Matthew and like Luke. I don't know, maybe he said it more than that. Don't you weep for me, Biatches, weep for yourself. It's a bad thing to have a bunch of children. Once again, <laughs> JC seems to be. They love him, they just don't like what he has to say. Except for that eternal life stuff. And blessed are those who are already blessed. <laughs> and fuck those who are already fucked. Or something like that. Uh, three. Enlarge the place of thy tent. And let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. Spare not. Length thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. Three. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left... Don't forget that one. Uh, and they, anyway, and thy seed, and thy seed, uh, shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Yeah, they call those ghettos. Uh, for fear not. For thou shalt not be ashamed, 
neither be thou confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame. Uh, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy youth, and shalt not remember the repro reproach of thy widow widowhood anymore. Five. For thy maker, thy husband, the Lord of hosts, is his name, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. And I think he calls himself that, too. So he must be. Six. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith thy God. 7. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. 8. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment. He's got a fucked up perception of time according to Second Peter. So that just means he's completely out of touch. The days is a thousand years. That means you don't even exist to him. You're a blur. But with Everlasting kindness. Will I have mercy on thee, saying, The Lord thy Redeemer. Uh, nine. For this, the waters of Noah. That's not King Noah. That's the guy with a boat full of animals. And seven kissing cousins or something. Yeah, they're they're going to populate the planet, those eight people. And that boat full of animals. Uh, uh, the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. Not be wroth with thee. Oh, wait. Uh, earth. So have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee. Ten. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, except when it does. It's mostly neglect, you know. Days of the thousand years, you know. And how long does a person live? Either shall the covenant of my people be removed saith the Lord, that hast mercy on thee. Eleven. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted. Behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors. And lay thy foundations with sapphires. Twelve. And I will make thy windows of agates. And thy gates of carbuncles. And all thy borders of pleasant stones. Of slightly lesser value, apparently. They don't get named. Maybe they're all pleasant cubic zirconiums. Thirteen. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. 14. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be 
far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear. And, with, and from terror, it shall not come near thee. Fifteen. Behold, they shall surely gather together against thee, not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. And let's say that. Then it's his will. Sixteen. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth, forth an instrument of his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me saith the Lord, and that's it for uh, 22. Let's read 23. There's a few sips, but I'm having one anyway. Three chapters. Ah. Chapter 23. The Savior commands that omissions from Nephite records be supplied so he got mad at those people that were doing all that bridging. Prophecy of Samuel, the Lamanite, added. It felt like it was added. One, and now, behold, I say unto you that ye ought to command, but ye ought to search these things. Yea, a commandment I give unto you that ye search these things diligently, for great are the words of Isaiah. That's Jesus talking. He thinks pretty highly of Isaiah. You know, because he talked about that Emmanuel dude that I still think was Hezekiah. Two, for surely he spake as touching all things concerning my people which are of the house of Israel. Therefore, it must needs be that he must speak also to the Gentiles. Three, and all things that he spake have been and shall be even according to the words which he spake, which is confirmed in this book. And if that's not good enough, these books also confirm it. So there you go, home run. Checkmate. All right. Four. Therefore, give heed to my words, write the things which I have told you, and according to the time that the will of the Father shall go forth unto the Gentiles. Five. And whosoever will hearken unto my words, and repenteth and be baptized, the, sa the same shall be saved. Search the prophets, for many there be that testify of these things. Six, and now, it came to pass. Ah. These guys kick some ass. Link below for this music.
That, in verse 6, when Jesus had said these words, he said unto them again, after he had expounded all the scriptures unto them, which they had received. Seems kind of chaotic, doesn't it? All right, I'm going to say a bunch of crazy shit, quote mine the fuck out of myself, repeat the Sermon on the Mounts, throw a little Isaiah in, and uh, I think Malachi, I don't know who else, and quite a bit of the epistles of Paul and others. And now he's getting back to business. All right. Unto them which they had received, he said unto them, Behold, other scriptures I would that ye should write, that ye have not. Something like that. Seven. And it came to pass. That he said unto Ephi, Bring forth the record which ye have kept in this thing. Eight. And when Nephi had brought forth the records and laid them before him, he cast his eyes upon them said, Verily I say unto you, I commanded my servant Samuel the Lamanite, you know that guy that was on top of the wall and their arrows couldn't reach him? That was a miracle that their arrows couldn't reach. From the ground to the top of a tower. I wonder what the, what the prevailing wind was that day. <sighs> Sorry, lost my place. Uh, Samuel the Lamanite, that he should testify unto this people, that at the day that the Father should glorify his name in me, that there were many saints who should arise from the dead, and should appear unto many, and should minister unto them. Book of Matthew. Just the book of Matthew, nobody else. Matt was a bit of a fibber. Very entertaining fellow, I'm sure. And should minister unto them, and he said unto them, Was it not so? 10. And his disciples answered him and said, Yea, Lord, Samuel did prophecy according to thy words, and they were all fulfilled. That's why we got to bring it up, even though it's all the news. 11. And Jesus said unto them, uh, Not quite. Too bad. How be it that ye have not written this thing? That many saints did arise and appear unto many. That did minister unto them. Twelve. And it came to pass. Ah. Uh. That Nephi remembered that this thing had not been written. Slipping up here. And this is supposed to be a perfect book. 13. And it came to pass. That Jesus commanded uh, uh, now, I command you do a better one next time. J 
Jesus commanded that it should be written that Samuel's done. Therefore it was written according as he commanded. 14. And now it came to pass that when Jesus had expounded all the scriptures in one which they had written, he commanded them that they should teach the things which he had expounded unto them, which has been repeated many times. That fact that he wants them to tell everybody what he said. <sighs> One more. I got more beer. <sighs> Not yet. <gasps> there it is. Damn. Sneaky. Chapter 24. Malachi's words given to the Nephites. I thought I remembered that. It's like, what the fuck is Jesus now? <sighs> He's there to tell them shit that's already written down. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, that'd be great if he'd do that now. I'd love it. I mean, it doesn't have to be just for me. I mean, there's a field not too far away. We could get some flyers out, you know, and he could tell us all about Isaiah and Malachi. If he's real, he could show up. Everybody pray for that, okay? And I'll wish for it real hard. Because it'd be cool. I hope there would be a quick Q&A session before he takes off again. Um, Malachi's words given to the Nephites, the law of tithes and offerings. Compare Malachi 3, because it's useful for the point they want to make. One, and it came to pass, That he commanded them that they should write the words which the Father had given unto Malachi. Which, at least they're not totally ripping him off, you know, at least they're, I mean, paraphrasing or something. Malachi, which he should tell unto them. And it came to pass still in verse one, and it's a long one. That after they could have made a whole verse for that right there. But it's all verse one. Okay, that's fine. I mean they wasted a period for nothing. That after they were written, he expounded them. And these were the words which he did tell unto them, saying, Thus said the Father unto Malachi, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye, uh, ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in is delightful. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Two, finally. Damn. But who 
may abide the day of his coming, huh? And who shall stand when he appeareth? I don't know. Anyone? <clears throat> For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. Three. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering of righteousness. Four. Then shall the offering Metatronic. That was profound. I had to listen to that one. Anyway, free down. Uh, four. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant under the Lord, but there's an ocean between them, so who gives a fuck? <sighs> As in the days of old, those pleasant offerings, and as in former years, five, and I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers. They're everywhere, aren't they? Practicing their sorcery. And against the adulterers. And against false swearers. And against those who oppress the hireling in his wages the widow, and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. Six, for I am the Lord. A little insecure about that, aren't you? You keep stating that, you know? I change not. Yeah, you still don't exist. You're still not real. You didn't change at all. Figment of the imagination. That is real as Gulliver's Travels. Wait, maybe those were real. <sighs> I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Peace for the moment. Seven. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Which means the same thing. Uh, return unto me, and I will return unto you with his unconditional love. If you just follow the rules. <sighs> Sayeth the Lord of hosts, but ye say, wherein shall we return? My thoughts exactly. Eight. Will a man rob God? Can you? Interesting thought. Yet, he have robbed me! But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering, Biarch, you owe me. Nine. 
Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open unto you the windows of heaven, and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it, it'll be that much. Eleven, and I will rebuke the devourer, the devourer, for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Okay? Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. <clears throat> Twelve, and all nations shall call you blessed. And ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Thirteen, your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, What have ye spoken against me? 14. Ye have said, It is vain to serve God. And what doeth it profit that we have kept his ordinances, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. 15. And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea. They that tempt God are even delivered. Sixteen. Then, they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. 17. And they shall be mine, <clears throat> saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Unconditional love. 18. Final verse. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. And that's it for 24, 23, and 22. Fucking fascinating. It's not like I'm trying to rush and finish. <laughs> Let's do some DMCA. DM DNC. DMCA. I got that on my head these days. I'm, uh, I've deleted some of my VOM readings because they have copyrighted music. I'm going to try to go through them and take them all off. Sucks because it fucks the whole continuity up. If people gave a shit, that would be just fucking awful, you know, but maybe I'll do it again in a couple of years. Who knows? Or maybe I'll just redo the ones I took off. <laughs> Chime in. Peace the fuck out. I hope you'll check out some of this boring ass shit because it's fascinating. Sometimes. Bye.